How do you teach war to children? At the World War II Museum in Gdansk, Poland, it is in an exhibit called Time Travel. Hi, I'm Matt, and welcome to another edition of Borders on Budgets. On this episode, we step back 80 years in time into a contemporary Polish apartment to see the devastations the Second World War would have had on an everyday family. Ale jeszcze zobaczcie, normalnie przejeżdża tramwaj, jeszcze wiszą polskie flagi na budynkach, jeszcze to się wyrażają. In addition to the enormity of the Museum of World War II in Gdańsk, there is a separate four-room exhibit where children can gain some comprehension as to the devastation war has. The spokesperson for the museum is Alexander, and he will gladly give us a tour of time travel. It's very, very similar to what you could meet in a Polish classroom, let's say in 1938-1939. Pictures over the teacher's desk. The coat of arms of the Republic of Poland in the middle, a cross over it. Taking them from their school to this room is uh, really um, making them feel the beginning of the time travel. They are still in a class classroom, like they were a few minutes or a few hours ago, but the classroom has changed. Naturally, in any schoolroom, there would be a map of the country, and these are the borders of pre-war Poland, and it included what is today the Baltic states and Western Ukraine, and it was these territories that were lost to the Soviet Union after the end of the Second World War. The whole plan of the exhibition, of this part of the exhibition, is to show uh, the same room belonging to the same family in three different moments of history. What we learn about the family? We learn from the name on the um, door that the father of the family is, is an engineer and we quickly notice that there is a uniform of a uh, Polish officer in uh, uh, cupboard. So we also learned that he is in the reserve forces. On the calendar is September the 3rd. So the war broke out only three days ago. Unlike other museum presentations, the exhibit at Time Travel encourages its visitors, especially children, to, to touch the objects that are on display. I, uh, I've never had the chance to, uh, to touch or, or hold an 80-year-old soccer ball before, so, uh, so I'll take this opportunity to do so. In Europe, those are newspapers from just the beginning of the war, the most important things which are happening. And behind the window you can see still a normal life, because it's September the 3rd, the war broke out only three days ago. The time travel exhibit continues to the second room, which is now 1943, four years into the Second World War, and it is here where objects are start to be seen missing. There is no uniform of the father of the family. You could find his letter from the POW camp on the, uh, on the table. You could find many things which show us the change the reality, how the reality of uh, the, 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 the circumstances of life of our normal family changed since 1939. Schools were closed. In other words, schools uh, for Polish kids organized by Germans only taught them read and write and count to make them workers. And those small cards here show us that even in every home, people were trying to keep their kids educated against all odds. The same street, similar houses, but different flags. This time those are Nazi German flags. This time there are Nazi German soldiers walking the street. This time there is uh, an outpost 
military outposts, German military outposts, there will be people in a moment, there will be people in a moment running from the uh, German patrol. Those are German soldiers arriving to catch people on the streets, to take them to f uh, slave labor camps or to concentration camps. That's why people are running away. This room is to signify the end of the war, May 8, 1945, VE Day, victory in Europe. Not much left over in victory. The hole in the wall behind me shows us the external reality. Warsaw is a sea of ruins. There are Soviet soldiers marching the streets. It's only a few buildings can be used somehow like that in the middle in which already some Polish administrative um, office was opened. Those sacks which are marked with UNRRA that was the help sent from the United States to Europe after the World War II. There is an uh, improvised bed here because there are many houses are destroyed so people are living many many people are living in one apartment so that family doesn't live in the whole apartment anymore it only lives in one room one of the marks of what was happening in this apartment uh, during the previous six years the radiator doesn't work anymore of course so it was replaced by uh, wood burning oven quite normal and it is also shown here in the exhibition to make children, uh, to allow children to uh, imagine the circumstances in which their grandparents had to live during the World War II. While time travel comprises of just four rooms, it is a sober and somber reminder of how war affects everybody, including children. Thank you for tuning in to this edition of Borders on Budgets. A reminder, Borders on Budgets, long distance hikes, slices of life, not a lot of money. From the Museum of World War II in Gdansk, Poland, thank you for tuning in and I look forward to seeing you on the next episode. The reason the Polish World War II Museum is located in Gdansk is that it was in this city on September 1st, 1939, where the war against Nazi Germany started. Check out the link below on the story about Westerplatte and the Polish Post Office Museum. Did you find this episode helpful? Good. Help Borders on Budgets. Hit the subscribe button below and don't forget to share this story with those who you believe should learn about the Second World War.